you guys who are running around posting these posts claiming that the CDA allows for punishment of people who decide to take editorial capacities, blah, 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 you're hurting that cause. Hello, friends. This is a friendly little public service announcement, if you will, about publishers versus platforms. I've seen several people, and I do mean several people, leaving comments on YouTube videos and in discussions about the difference between a publisher and a platform, and how Google and Facebook and other social sites should be punished for anything published on their platform if they take any sort of editorial stance on the content. In other words, if something is deleted from the platform, people think that that makes them a publisher instead of a platform, and that the law allows for some kind of remedy, you know, like them being responsible for literally everything ever posted to Google, Facebook, whatever they are, that some kind of remedy is established in the law for that. It is not. If you read the Communications Decency Act, Section 230, the thing that most people think gives you publisher versus platform, there's no such mention. The important thing to remember about the CDA is that it was put in place so that web companies could have confidence that if they censored naughty things, they would not then be on the other end of a First Amendment lawsuit. The CDA was put in place to allow for deleting naughty things from the internet so that the children's wouldn't see them. It was not put in place to punish people for censoring. It was put in place to make sure they weren't punished for censoring. Read the content of the law and you'll find out very quickly. The only thing the law does is enable pass-through responsibility for anything that a user posts to any kind of platform, be it a tiny internet forum or Facebook and Twitter. And the other thing it does is there are some minor things relating to filtering and such, but it releases them from liability for censorship and it makes them not responsible for what their users post to their platform. Now, there are some overrides. You still, if you're notified that, you know, your site is a haven for kitty porn, you're probably going to be forced to do something about it because you can't just leave it up there like, oh yeah, I didn't know. Well, you know. So you might have a responsibility to delete that. Please delete that. But otherwise, if someone was to post a bunch of trash and you didn't know about it, they're responsible legally for it, not you as the person who runs the site. In general, that's how it works. However, I continuously see people posting about publisher versus platform. If you delete content, if you censor me, you're a publisher and not a platform, and the government needs to crack down on that because law doesn't allow... That's not how it works. Read the law. There was a Supreme Court case that said that a politician, specifically Donald Trump, that a politician cannot block citizens from following them on social media. That case didn't say anything else. It did not make it so that all of Twitter is considered some sort of giant uncensorable public platform. That case said that Donald Trump can't block people on Twitter. And uh, consequentially, any public official who is using that platform in a public capacity cannot block other people from following them and communicating with them on that platform. However, if there are a hundred million users on a platform and the president is one of them, the other 99,999,999 users are under no obligation to do anything one way or the other, nor is Twitter under any obligation one way or the other to not censor you. That falls back on the Communications Decency Act, which, may I remind you, doesn't make that, di that distinction you think that it does. So. 
Everyone who's parroting these things about how politicians create a platform where you can't censor and the Communications Decency Act doesn't allow them to edit anything, otherwise they become responsible for everything, needs to actually read the law. I would love it if the entire internet is what some people refer to as a cesspool of free speech. I would love it if all websites had to let you speak as you pleased, or at least the large ones that hold a gigantic, privately owned, corporate monopoly over everything you can say and do on the internet in their own little, read, humongous corner of the internet. I would love it if that was the case. You guys who are running around posting these posts claiming that the CDA allows for punishment of people who decide to take editorial capacities, blah blah blah, you're hurting that cause because you look like a fool. Please understand what you're talking about before you open your mouth and speak on the subject. You're hurting what you want to see come about and what I would like to see come about no less. Please think about it for a second, read the actual law, read the court decisions that are relevant, and understand what it is that you're talking about. It's very important, especially with law, that you truly understand what is being discussed and what the exact words are that were used to describe what the law says is and isn't okay, is and isn't allowable, what remedies are and are not taken, in what situations. Understand what you're talking about before you talk about it. Please stop embarrassing yourselves and by proxy, people like me who would love to see rampant free speech like you saw on the Chan boards in the mid-2000s all over the internet. Much to the chagrin of all the pearl-clutching, think-of-the-children twat waffles that are all over the place trying to control what you can say and do. Dear God, I hate Snapchat so much. On that note, I'm going to go scream my free speech at someone who bleeped in my video. Have a wonderful day.